The topic for today, fact or fiction, common misconceptions about iPad in schools. Again, my name is Tad Johnson. I'm a senior solutions architect here with Jamf Software. The reason we chose this topic today is that there has been, just over the last few months, there's been significant changes in how iPad management is done. There, there were changes coming from Apple uh, in the way that iOS works on an iPad and in the way that iOS interacts with management solutions like those created by Jamf Software. We've updated our software significantly in the last few months as well. So if you've been curious about iPads in schools, maybe you've started a small pilot, but you're just getting, getting, your, uh, getting your program going, this is a great time to come back and re-examine some of those core uh, foundational concepts and look at how iPad management has changed. And hopefully this will give you a good uh, baseline to start from as you look forward into uh, deploying more iPads in your school. So the agenda today. First off, we're gonna start with a brief overview of the Casper Suite and of Jamf software. Just in case this is the first time you've, you've uh, talked with us, I wanna give you a little bit of context of who we are and where we're coming from. Then we'll talk about education technology in the classroom, a little bit of foundation of, of why, you know, why approach this topic at all. And uh, from there, we're gonna dive into five common misconceptions or maybe five things that have changed significantly about managing an iPad uh, in, in school. We'll review those changes to the iPad management framework that has occurred in 2016 already this year. And then again, I will save some time for Q&A. So as we go along, please send in your questions and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can after, uh, after we're done with the main content here. Sound good? Let's get started. First, a brief overview of Jamf Software and our uh, flagship product, the Casper Suite. Uh, this is uh, what you'll find on the wall outside of each of our offices. This is our, our purpose in life. Uh, here at Jamf Software, our goal is helping organizations succeed with Apple. It's a simple mission, but it really is uh, central to our, our strategy. And today we're really gonna focus on how we can help schools to succeed with iPad. Uh, we do that through lots of different ways, but one of the primary uh, areas that we invest our time and energy is developing the Casper Suite. <clears throat> what is the Casper Suite? There's a few different components that make up the Casper Suite. Uh, first off, the Jamf Software Server, or JSS, this is the web-based tool that you can use to manage all of your, uh, all of your iPads. We all can also manage uh, iPhones or Mac computers as well. The Casper Suite also includes a number of utilities. Now, most of these are, are focused on Mac management, so I'm not gonna dive into much detail here. And we include self-service, which is user-facing tools intended for, uh, for the actual end users of these devices. And we will t dive into a little bit more detail about self-service today. The way that the, uh, the JSS is hosted is again, it's available through a web console, so you can access that from a computer, whether that's a Mac or a Windows PC. You can access this from a mobile device as well, an iPad, an iPhone, um, and that server itself can either be, uh, we offer that as a service where we host it on your behalf, so you just subscribe to, uh, subscribe to the Casper Suite and you don't have to worry about the hardware, or if you prefer, you can install that on a server that you're maintaining, and that can be uh, running on OS X server, a Windows server, or a Linux server. Uh, the Jamf software server communicates with all of the devices that you're managing. It uses the MDM, or Mobile Device Management uh, APIs that Apple includes in all of their operating systems, and it gives you a lot of power as we get into this to manage these devices uh, ongoing. So a brief overview there of the, of the Casper suite. Again, if you'd like to see, I'm not gonna dive into too much um, I'm not going to be doing a deep demo of the product today. So if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely encourage you to, uh, to contact us at Jamf Software and we can arrange for a demo or you can go on our website and you can watch lots of product videos there as well. All right, so before we, dump, we jump into talking about managing an iPad, I thought it'd be a good idea first to remind ourselves, what is it about education technology that uh, that 
has inspired so much effort, so much energy, so much attention over the last few years of really transforming the way that we do teaching uh, through these technology tools. So when we think about an iPad, uh, it's been around now for a handful of years. Uh, we're going, I think we're going on about six years since the iPad was first introduced. Uh, what makes this such a, such a valuable tool inside the classroom? Well, first off, it's, it's a, an intuitive interface that immediately changes for whatever task is at hand. And uh, as, we, as we all know, it can be used with the, the one input device that we all carry 10 of around our fingers. Um, this is not a, a subtle point, especially for younger students. The iPad can really be a great way to introduce more complex technology in a really simple and easy to use interface. Of course, it's entirely wireless. You don't need to plug it in. It, can, it has an all-day battery, so as long as you charge it overnight, it's ready to go throughout the entire school day. And uh, it includes, or it can connect to, a huge ecosystem of educational apps from software developers all around the world who are making purpose-built apps to meet virtually any learning, learning goal or educational goal that you may have. The, one of the great things about, about the iPad and about Apple in general is just what a, what a broad uh, ecosystem of developers has, has grown up around that. So that if you're a teacher or if you're an IT pro and you're looking for great apps, uh, you're, you're going to be able to find really high quality software to use with that iPad. Of course, we also have uh, the, the iPad can be your access to uh, books, to ebooks, to interactive content. You can even create and publish books uh, using an iPad. And uh, the, it provides a really intuitive way to, to kind of change the model of, of, assigning, of teachers assigning work, collecting that work, and grading it. We can take what used to be a lot of paper going back and forth, and we can turn that into a, into a really easy to, easy to use and interactive workflow where students are getting on-demand interactive feedback directly from their teachers throughout the day. The iPad can also do much more advanced work. Uh, it, can be, it can take the place of, of a lot of expensive uh, equipment, and you can do things like simulating science experiments in the lab, or even dissecting a virtual frog, so you don't have to go in and, uh, and actually do that in, in the real world. The iPad has a camera and can create both uh, photographs and video, turning it into a production studio uh, that rivals the, the same equipment that 20 years ago would have cost tens of thousands of dollars. And of course, it's a, it's an, a portal to access the billions and billions of hours of video that are created by other uh, teachers, students, professionals all around the world. We should mention the iPad is also great for gaming. And let's remember, gaming does not have to be just, just something that we do for, uh, for leisure. But more and more schools are finding that uh, bringing an element of gaming into the classroom gives you a way to combine both learning uh, with some fun. And of course, um, Maybe this goes without saying, but the iPad really is that, uh, that access to a wealth of information. The, the world's libraries are open to you uh, on an iPad or on any computer. And it's, it's just remarkable that we've given, uh, that we can provide this level of access to all of our students in a relatively low cost uh, device. So when we think about this, I, I think, again, I don't think I have to convince you that, that uh, there is definite educational value in providing, uh, providing access to these kind of type of computing devices to students in the classroom. But while, while managing one iPad or setting up one iPad is relatively easy, the challenge that our customers face is how do we take that same experience, we want to give that same great experience to every student where there might be hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of iPads that we're managing uh, in one school district. So the, the challenges that we see, and, we, and we've heard a lot uh, over the years, is it can be a challenge to scale that deployment, right? Anyone can do an iPad deployment of 10 iPads. Uh, but when that 10 becomes 10,000, that's when the challenges arise. Uh, the, same, the same thing, there, there can be, uh, uh, historically, there's been a challenge with sharing iPads. If you have a school where you don't have uh, a one-to-one -one assignment, but where multiple students might use the same iPad throughout the day, this can be a challenge. Uh, we've heard a lot of customers that have, faced, that have faced some issues with Apple IDs and how those are managed. 
And then updating can be uh, can be an issue as well when uh, when it comes time both to update apps, to install new apps, or to update the uh, iOS version that's installed on each iPad. So these are some of the challenges that we've heard over the years. And what I want to dive into now is looking at five, five kind of core challenges that we've heard. Uh, and I'm presenting this in a little bit of the, uh, the myth versus reality format. So we can talk about what was the, maybe what was um, a misconception Maybe it was true in the past, but we're going to talk about what's the, what is the case now when we deal with iPad management. So number one, iPads, uh, this is the, the claim or the, the myth. iPads require hands-on management. And as you can imagine, if you had to go around and touch every, every one of those 10,000 iPads every, time, every day or every time you had to update it, that could be uh, quite a challenge. The good news is that this, uh, this is no longer true. Maybe it was never true, but this, this really is not true anymore. You can do the full lifecycle management of an iPad where you as the IT professional don't have to ever touch that iPad. You can, you can, have, uh, you can do everything from the initial enrollment, which of course requires someone to touch it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be an IT pro. You can automate a lot of those enrollment steps Make it as easy as just going through the setup assistant, which any, if anyone has used an iPad in the past, that, they'll be familiar with it. And even if it's the very first time they've touched an iPad, that enrollment process, that setup assistant, is really easy enough that, um, that you could assign this work to, uh, to your teachers, you could assign this to students, you could have volunteers coming in uh, during the summer break and helping you go, uh, go through this process. When it comes to app deployment, uh, there's the uh, volume purchasing program, which was introduced a few years ago. That's now been, imp been greatly improved, where you can do all of your volume purchasing of apps from a central location on, on, on your computer, and you can assign which apps should be installed on which iPads. You can do all of that through the Casper suite, and as long as those iPads are powered on and connected to your wireless network, then those I that iP the app installation can be entirely automatic and done over, over your network. Same thing with iOS updates. Uh, this was another change that happened um, what, now about a year, a year and a half ago, where now you no longer have to go and touch the iPad to initiate an iOS update. From your Casper Suite console, you can, uh, you can identify which iPads you want to update, as long as they're powered on and on your network, you can send a command to automatically perform that iOS update. And the last one, with configurations. Now, configurations take uh, many different forms, everything from setting up that, uh, the details for joining your wireless network, uh, choosing which kind of restrictions you might want to apply to that, um, uh, other settings that you want to control on the iPad. But one of the new... Um, the relatively new things that's added is now you can even lay out the home screen. So which apps are on the home screen, which apps are on the second or third page, which apps are in the dock along the bottom of the iPad. You can configure all of that through the Casper suite so that, again, you don't have to go around and, and physically touch the iPad to move your apps around. You can set all, set all that up ahead of time so that the moment that the iPad uh, goes through that enrollment process and starts to receive its configurations, now it's perfectly set up just the way you want it. All this can be done uh, at scale, so you can do this just as easily on 100 devices as on, a, on thousands of devices, and it can all be done through the Casper suite using, uh, using the mobile device management technology. So just uh, in, in summary, iPads do not require a lot of hands-on management. Number two. Uh, We've heard in the past that Apple IDs were a chore to manage, that it was, uh, this was a, a challenge for schools who were rolling out a large number of devices and they needed to have Apple IDs for each of their students. This has been one of the biggest changes this year where Apple introduced the Apple School Manager Program and along with that, a new concept called a managed Apple ID. And what that means is that if your school is enrolled in the Apple School Manager Program, now you can create your own managed Apple IDs for every student and every staff. This is uh, essentially, think of this as the same way you're going to create a, 
uh, a user account for each of your students and staff or an email address for each student or staff. Now you can also create a managed Apple ID. These, it's important to note this is not the same as just creating your own personal Apple ID. A managed Apple ID is designed for school use. So there are certain, uh, certain features that are intentionally disabled with that. For example, you're not going to use a managed Apple ID with Apple Pay because this is intended for, uh, for use in a school where it's being managed by your, your IT group. The user experience is really seamless where you, can, uh, uh, you know which students have which managed Apple IDs because you're creating those. And so uh, for each student, they don't have to go through a lot of extra steps to begin using that. You can simply uh, uh, provide this for the students and they can update their passwords on their own. If a password's ever forgot or needs to be reset, you have the power to do that as well. So it's really uh, making that a great experience for, for both IT and users. And after a student graduates, you can actually transition a managed Apple ID into a standard Apple ID so that they can continue on their, their lifelong journey of learning and they can bring all of the great uh, content and work that they've done with them. So if you've, ever had a, if you've ever had this challenge before, know that Apple IDs with Apple School Manager and the managed Apple ID concept are really, uh, uh, really easy now to manage. All right, myth number three. My teachers can't install apps they need on demand. Uh, this is something that we have spent a lot of time working on. We at Jamf have really tried to, try to take this and solve this problem, both for the IT professional who's supporting them and for the teachers who are in the classroom every day and who need quick access to install new apps. Uh, the, the solution that we've developed is called Self Service. It's an app that, that we provide uh, it integrates with, it's part of the Casper suite, so it talks to that, uh, that Jamf software server. And what you can do with this is you can build an app catalog that's custom tailored for your school. So you pick exactly which apps are going to be available, and that app catalog can differ depending on who, uh, on who launches that self-service app. So for example, a different grade, uh, a different class, Maybe teachers have a different set of apps than the students that they're working with. Or you could even get as precise as saying, uh, these, this set of iPads is left in the science classroom every day. This set of iPads is left in the math classroom. So you could, um, you could differentiate based on that as well. From this self-service app catalog, it's just as easy to use as the standard app store. You can go in here and tap install. It'll automatically install whatever apps um, they require. And because this is, is part of the Casper suite, this can integrate with that volume purchasing concept we talked about a moment ago. So if it's an app that does cost, uh, if there's a, a cost for that app, if there's a license required, you can purchase that ahead of time in bulk, and then you don't have to worry about individual purchasing at the time of install. Uh, a lot of our customers are using this. This is great not only for teachers, but for students as well. And if you wanted to, you could even disable the, uh, the full App Store app from the iPad, and you could use self-service as your single path to installing new software on the iPad. So now, with this, you don't have to worry about getting frantic calls uh, to you about having to install a new app. You can provide this to all of your students, all your staff, all your teachers, and they can do this all on their own. All right, number four. Uh, when iPads go missing, we're stuck. And we know that um, you know, iPads are, again, a relatively precious piece of equipment, and they're, of course, very small and, and portable. Um, a lot of schools have been stuck in the past with the unfortunate trade-off of either just dealing with the fact that an, that an iPad might go missing or using, a, uh, using something like constant geotracking, uh, using that GPS uh, the GPS or the geolocation services to constantly track every, every iPad, not only during the school day, but even if that iPad is going home with a student. And we really believe that, that there's a better way to do this. And now with the Casper Suite, uh, you can enable something called Lost Mode, which is a new feature that was added, uh, added for all iOS devices in the last few months. With Lost Mode, if you as an ITA professional you get a call that an iPad's gone missing, 
or you check your inventory and discover that this iPad hasn't been seen uh, in your classroom in the last few days, you can turn on loss mode from the Casper suite. What that will do is it will first lock the iPad from use. It, uh, so you can ensure if there's any sensitive data on that, now it's protected. Along with that lock, uh, that lock screen, you can display a custom message. So you can give your, you can give a message that says, this iPad belongs to my school, provide a phone number or the address of the school where to return it. And importantly, this will also turn on location services uh, on that iPad and it will attempt to locate itself, figure out where it is in the world, and then send that location back to you through the Casper suite so that you can try to find that uh, wherever it might be. And the important, the really important part is that this is a way to use location services when you need them without having to, having to be tracking every student wherever they are and every teacher wherever they are all the time. So really this gives you the way to ensure that you have the right information to, to find a lost iPad without compromising on privacy. We think that's really important and we're really excited to be uh, supporting uh, our customers in using this. So now, of course, we can't guarantee that Lost Mode is, gonna, uh, is going to recover that iPad. Maybe it fell off a truck or it's at the bottom of the river. But uh, this is really the best way that you, uh, that you can uh, stack the deck in your favor of recovering any iPads that happen to go missing. Oh, and, there, and this is what that Lost Mode looks like. So this is inside the Casper Suite if I'm, uh, if I'm in my web console. And here you can see I can enable Lost Mode. I can add my custom message, maybe a phone number or other information, and when I enable that, then it will lock, display my message, and attempt to uh, send its location back home. Number five, sharing iPads among students is difficult to manage. This is another one that's been completely turned on its head, and if you haven't yet had the chance to experience this, this, I think, is one of the more exciting uh, new capabilities that have been introduced this year. There's now a way to deploy, a sh deploy an iPad in a shared iPad uh, mode. This can be done through the Casper suite. It does require iOS 9.3 or later, so it's a uh, relatively new feature. And the, what's really neat about this is that you can give every student a personal experience. So they, when they pick up that iPad, they tap on their on their face, so there, you know, they, you see a little grid of um, of students who might be using that iPad that day. They tap on their face. They can input their passcode uh, for their managed Apple ID or a simple um, numeral code if it's for younger students. And what happens is that iPad launches. It will synchronize with iCloud, so it will download any of the personal data associated with that student, and they have their own, uh, basically their their own view of that iPad. They use it for the day or they use it during that class. When they log out, then again, all that data syncs with iCloud, so it's all protected. If another student picks it up, they don't see, they don't have to see any of the work that the, that the previous student just completed. They again have their own personal experience on that iPad. This has been, I mean, this is just a, a really neat, um, a really neat, neat technology solution to the problem of how do I give a personal experience on a shared device. Um, again, this, this can be uh, managed by the Casper suite. It's available now. Uh, there are some restrictions on exactly which iPad models. The newer iPad models are required for, uh, for speed and performance purposes. But if you haven't yet seen this, I'd really encourage you to take a look because this can, this can really change the, the dynamic of how you approach shared iPad use within your school. All right. So now we've talked about five of these, uh, five of the myths that we've heard over time. So let's do a quick recap on what are the big changes in iPad management in 2016 and how can you make the best use of it? So a lot of these changes uh, were introduced earlier this spring. Uh, in around March of this year was when Apple rolled out iOS version 9.3 and we released the Casper Suite version 9.9. All of the new, all the stuff that I've been talking about today does require that you have iOS 9.3 or later and Casper Suite 9.9 .9 or later in order to take full advantage of this. But along with these changes, this is where we got that shared iPad concept. Uh, the Apple School Manager was introduced, managed Apple IDs, and a classroom app, 
which is designed for teachers to give them the ability to uh, guide their class as they are using their iPads, doing things like, uh, like getting their attention, uh, directing them to a specific app or website or uh, ebook, or even doing things like, uh, like resetting a passcode or uh, if they're using that shared, that shared iPad model, you can automatically log an iPad out if a student forgets to do it on their own. So really, really impressive stuff. Um, if, you're, if you've been, been managing Apple for, uh, for a few years, you should take note that this, this represents uh, a pretty significant shift in the timing of how Apple is rolling out updates. Traditionally, for the last few years, there have been an, there's been an update every fall where iOS and uh, Mac OS X get updated in around September or October. Now what we're seeing is that there's a springtime update where all of the important changes that Apple is introducing specific to the education use case are going to be launched in the spring so that you have time to test, to evaluate, to integrate, and roll those out over the summertime so that when your students are coming back in the fall, you're ready to go. So this has been a really positive change, and we're really excited to be supporting our customers in, in rolling this out uh, this summer. So how, how can you uh, take, these and take this and do this on your own? First off, if you're not already, use the Casper Suite. Um, of course, uh, you know, we are not the only, only solution that can offer support for schools, but we, are, we do stand alone in that we, uh, we have chosen to exclusively support Apple devices. This is our whole product focus, our whole company focus, and we believe that we're going to give you the best, uh, the best experience with managing iPads in, in a classroom by using the Casper Suite. If you haven't yet, I'd encourage you to sign up for Apple School Manager. Right now, this is in uh, what's called a public preview. So uh, if, you, if you go to that website, you'll see a little preview tag in the corner. But what, what we know is that uh, very soon, like this, this month even, uh, is Apple is going to be helping customers tra transition. If you've already been using the device enrollment program or the volume purchase program, you're already in those Apple deployment programs, uh, they're going to be helping you to transition over to the device, or, or, sorry, helping you transition to Apple School Manager. And moving forward, this will be your, your key uh, Apple portal, Apple deployment portal for all things education. So again, we're, we're you know, really key that you're using these Apple deployment programs for device enrollment, for volume purchasing of apps. And as part of that, when you're setting up a new iPad, you want to supervise those iPads. Supervision is, is a, a, uh, it's a way to, to enable additional management features on devices that your school owns. And it's integrated with the enrollment program. So this is just simple as uh, going into the Casper suite, checking a box, and then as you set up new iPads, you can ensure they're supervised. You can also connect to Apple School Manager with your student information system. So that'll help you to synchronize student roster data. So who's in what class and what are all their names and what are all their um, email addresses. You can synchronize that information with Apple School Manager and with the Casper Suite. And you should take a look at that classroom app for your teachers. And, and uh, if you haven't yet begun, really encourage you to start testing if that is going to be the right uh, the right tool for you to use with your teachers so that they have uh, the additional tools and the additional um, management capabilities to help them in the classroom. So how else can we help here at Jamf? The Casper Suite, again, it's built for iPad management. Um, we, all we do is, is Apple device management. We've been doing this now since 2002. Uh, obviously, it started when it was just the Mac, and have, we've added iOS for iPad and iPhone. Uh, more recently. But this is really our, our key focus. Uh, we have over 4,000 schools around the world that we're helping with today, and we want to, we really want to make this the best possible experience for you as an IT pro and for all the, stu the students and teachers that you're supporting. We offer training and certification courses for your staff so you can build your skills um, and get more hands-on experience with these, with these concepts and, techn and technology. And you can do that in a safe space. So you don't, have to, you don't have to be testing this with your own uh, real in-production iPads. We can offer that all that in a lab environment for you to, to learn all this stuff um, using our equipment. 
We also offer um, professional services to help you if you're going through a big rollout. So say you're, if, you're, if you've got a whole truckload of iPads that you're getting ready to deploy, we can help you with that process. We can help you to upgrade uh, your management system, or we can even help you with uh, rolling out some of these new features that I talked about today. And uh, we support the Jamf Nation community, which is uh, a community of 35,000 plus uh, Apple IT professionals around the world who are doing this work uh, day in and day out. So if you're if you're curious about this, if you want to hear from other schools to get what uh, what they're what they're up to, please check out JamfNation.com where you can learn more. So a few next steps. If you if you're not yet using the Casper Suite, or if you just want to see more of this in depth, head over to JamfSoftware.com where you can connect with us and uh, either you can get started on a on a trial of our software, or you can find a lot more resources there to help you. Uh, evaluate how you can use this in the future. We offer a library of on-demand webinars. So if you like what you're hearing right now, you can learn more or you can uh, review these on your own time. And again, this will be uh, this webinar that you're on right now will be part of that very soon. And we're offering, uh, as part of our Jamf Nation program, we're offering the Jamf Nation User Conference back again for the seventh year I believe, sixth year, I believe, um, the Jamf Nation User Conference will be held this October 18th through 20th, uh, right here where I'm speaking to you from in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So if you're, if you're able to come, this is a great way to uh, connect in, in person with other, uh, with other professionals. You'll hear from lots of other schools that are doing this right now. Um, and this is a great way to, to kind of take that to the next level and get, get, um, and build some of that uh, experience for yourself. So with that, let me say a big thank you. Thanks for everyone who's taken some time out of their day to uh, talk with, with me about iPad management and have a great rest of your day. Thanks.